Hello, good morning, good afternoon, welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Anya Richmond. Anya is the Programme Director of the Wyoming Energy Authority, uh, or sorry, Energy Agency, which is a, a state agency um, there in Wyoming. So welcome, Anya. Thank you. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. So the, the Wyoming um, uh, Energy Authority, can you tell us a little bit of, of, about it? it? It's obviously a state agency, as I just said. Uh, what, 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 is your, what is your objectives and uh, when, when were you set up? Yeah, so we're a fairly new agency. We're two and a half years old, and we were created um, to support and sustain the energy economy in Wyoming. So we've developed a strategy. It's a pretty straightforward, basic strategy. It's empowering the nation on a net zero with net zero energy, all of the above. And we really are approaching energy development as being an energy solution provider. So um, we embrace all forms of energy. We uh, leverage the legacy industries that we have. So when we're looking at fossil fuels, looking at how to do that sustainably and with low carbon impacts and developing all other forms of energy when we're looking at uh, renewables, nuclear, et cetera. And yeah, I mean, Wyoming is, I, I guess, synonymous with, with some of the traditional forms of energy and, and, and coal and, and, and um, natural gas. Obviously, you're, you're speaking at the World Hydrogen North America Congress, which is in, in um, Houston in, in uh, I think, 15th to 17th of May, and you're talking about hydrogen hubs. So how, how are you viewing, I guess, the energy transition? You, you mentioned net zero. So obviously, Wyoming has got some tr tremendous renewable resources. Um, and, and I guess you're looking to develop those and, and then obviously lead on into, into hydrogen as well. Yeah. So, I mean, we all know that the world of energy is changing, right? So demand for energy is not decreasing, but the form of what that energy looks like is changing. And we don't know what that final composition is going to look like, but we do know that um, we need to provide the energy that our markets demand, that our um, environment demands. And so we are looking to create platforms and enable all forms of responsible energy development, responsible, sustainable energy development. Um, we are energy leaders. We export 80 to 90 percent of the energy that we produce, and we strive to remain energy innovators and energy leaders and really just le leverage the, uh, the know-how, the workforce and the knowledge that we have around that. Yeah. And the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the renewable profile, I guess, is, is heavily slewed to win, but you also, uh, I guess, get good solar there as well. Yeah, so we have top wind resources. We have very good solar resources as well. Um, and then we have the, uh, the mineral resources. Um, so mineral resources, both for the fossil fuel, and then we also have geologic formations that can sequester carbon dioxide indefinitely. So looking to really combine and package all forms of energy development and be that energy solution provider. Yeah, so you, you also, yeah, also have so, um, nat natural gas resources and, and then you can do the CCS and create sort of blue hydrogen route and, and also, yeah, start tapping some more of your wind resources. I saw there's some big wind farms being developed. So this is it Cherry, which I think is down to possibly grow up to sort of two to three gigawatts. It's a, it's a big wind farm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's been in development for quite some time. Um, but yeah, it's the, the largest onshore wind farm in the United States. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And um, you're obviously going to be speaking about around the hydrogen hubs, and, and there's obviously the Western Interstate Hydrogen Hub, which which you're part of, along with your your colleagues or, or, or fellow states, which are which are um, uh, New Mexico, uh, Colorado, and Utah. So, what 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 is the thinking behind the, the hydrogen hub, and and what what are your thoughts around around hydrogen per se? Yeah, so when the bipartisan infrastructure law came out and designated that there would be funding available for a hydrogen hub, um, we realized that we would be able to have a much bigger impact if we partnered, because like I said, Wyoming is an energy exporter, so we need to be able to partner with those markets and really be able to leverage that. And so um, our Western states, we um, came together, saw what that possibility would be if we cooperate rather than uh, compete with each other. So the four governors signed a memorandum of understanding a year ago in February, um, saying that we would collaborate together on a 
uh, proposal for the hydrogen hub and not compete um, against each other. And I think this is pretty significant because we have um, two Republican states and two uh, Democrat led states. So um, Colorado and New Mexico being Democrat and Utah and Wyoming being Republican. And, you know, we're able to come together in a bipartisan way and really show that collaboration is, um, is best, especially when we're looking at big, massive challenges like you know, what's the future of energy going to look like and how are we going to be able to solve that? So for the hydrogen hub, we're um, cooperating and really looking at how to build up the hydrogen economy across the four states. So how are we addressing production, transportation and use within the states? And then also how do we leverage markets then beyond the states? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess the, the production side is well covered, and I guess on the on the on the midstream side, I mean, you've got existing um, pipes and 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 uh, you know pipeline network and, and gas infrastructure. How, how you set up on the sort of midstream? Yeah. So hydrogen isn't as isn't always easy to transport. So being able to leverage the natural gas infrastructure that is um, expansive across our four states is really one way to step that up. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the projects in our four states is um, Excel Energy, and they are based in Colorado. They're a large utility um, and looking to blend natural gas into their, or excuse me, hydrogen into their natural gas systems. Um, and that approach is being uh, looked at then across the four states as far as uh, Dominion Energy in Utah is doing the same thing, blending hydrogen into the natural gas systems mm -hmm. so that we can be leveraging those investments and that infrastructure that's been put in place as we're looking to move towards decarbonizing the, the energy infrastructure. And is that sort of, I guess, um, demand development, is that, is that the right word in terms of trying to you know, help grow the industry? So you've got some definite offtake there that then can help attract maybe new industries or, or people that want to come in, in situ and, and, you know, invest in the state and, and be secure that you, you, you're already producing hydrogen. Yeah, the, the challenge really that we've seen as we've been working on this hydrogen hub um, for the last year is um, the production side isn't the challenge. Like mm. we have technology, we have know-how to be able to do that. It's that end user offtake market where that's softer than we'd mm. like to see. Um, mm. But leveraging the natural gas infrastructure and network is a way to help um, create a reservoir for end use for the hydrogen that's produced so that we can show we have a steady supply of hydrogen. And then as other large single users of hydrogen um, are looking for that source, we can point to, hey, we have this constant supply and we can back out maybe a little bit from the hydrogen blending so that the person that needs 100% hydrogen can have that. Um, so really it's it's trying to, to build that market and demand <laughs> so that we're not out of balance on one side too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can start getting some steel in the ground and, and get things moving and, um, you know, learn, learn for doing. And um, and in terms of, I guess, yeah, I mean, you obviously, you know, the, uh, the state authority and, and I guess one of the big areas is around uh, permitting and, and um, you know, uh, helping to build the things that get steel in the ground. So is, is that is an area that you, you um, leverage? You know, obviously a state agency looking for the, uh, the 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 state to transition and, and not have I assume you know um you know famous or well, not famous but um you also you know, traditionally spy out of coal and it's about making sure those communities aren't left behind. Yeah so obviously the whole um timeline is is important for permitting um and trying to be able to streamline how that works, how the agencies work together. Uh, here in the West, we also have a lot of federal lands. So we're looking at a lot of um, BLM, Bureau of Land Management lands and other types of, of federal lands. So you have both the state agencies and the federal agencies, but we have a good working relationship with our local offices. Um, understanding that energy development is important, um, creates jobs, 
or transition helps transition jobs, as you mentioned, you know, as as demand for coal changes, can we shift that knowledge and know-how then to other energy jobs? So yeah, we're we're looking at the whole um, spectrum of what value we can provide, whether it's on the the permitting side or helping with workforce transitioning, workforce retraining. Yeah, so really being that coordinator of the future of energy in the states is what the Wyoming Energy Authority is is looking to do. Excellent. Well, that makes makes a lot of sense. Of exciting times and. and um great to see you know the 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 state out there um and and you know being forward thinking being you know involved in such an early stage and and seeing also the you know the the thinking around the the interstate hub um is yeah is is good and and clearly having that sort of bipartisan approach is 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 certainly i guess um going to take some of the sort of political risk out and and give hopefully you know private investors uh a lot of sort of security about coming in and, and investing so you're obviously going to be speaking, as I said, at the World Hydrogen um, North America Congress. Um, we look forward to, to having you there. We look forward to learning more about the opportunities in, in Wyoming and indeed across the, the whole of the, the, the Western USA. So um, many thanks for, for taking the time to share some of your thoughts today. Um, and uh, as I said, we look forward to uh, you having a, a fruitful discussions and, and meetings um, in Houston uh, come May the 15th to 17th. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. It's always nice to get down to warmer climates. <laughs> yeah, you can enjoy it. Well, what's the temperature in Wyoming today? Is it windy oh, goodness. Cold? Today, I think it's going to get up into the 40s. Oh, so, okay. but we, had, we had snow yesterday. Right. Okay. Excellent. Good stuff. So do you get, do you get to go skiing or is it quite flat there? Um, so in order to get to a ski resort from here, you need to drive about an hour and a half. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Not too far. Great. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have a look and maybe for my next skiing holiday, put it down. <laughs> so, um, Jackson, Wyoming for, uh, up in the, up near Yellowstone National Park, they're, uh, well known for good skiing. It's a very beautiful, beautiful mountain area. Excellent. There we go. We also also got a, a top tip on, on where to ski in Wyoming. So many thanks, Anya. Look forward to, to seeing you in Houston. All right. Thanks. Look forward to it myself. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. All right.